Friends, I read the internet both for business and pleasure. And once in a while, I use a search engine. Goggle, I think it's called. So, in an afternoon break, sipping my Earl Grey and crunching my cucumber sandwiches, I idly searched for how to set preamp gain. Not because I want to know how to do it, I've been doing it for the last 40 odd years, but because I was interested in how other people say it should be done. I'm in the business of explaining audio, so I need to make sure that my explanations are the best around. If someone has a better explanation than me, I need to put the work in to leapfrog them. <laughs> anyway, as you know, the top search result in Goggle is always totally accurate and has been judged so by the almighty algorithm. <laughs> yeah. The top result, which, as I said, is the most accurate explanation possible, says that you should set the gain on the preamp in your audio interface so that the LED turns green but not red. OK, that sounds sensible, but how many audio interfaces actually have any kind of metering? There are plenty that don't. Audio interface manufacturers actually know what they're doing. I said in a previous video that the real experts in audio mostly aren't on the internet. They're in manufacturing. And so a competent interface designer will make it so that the electronic part of the interface has plenty of headroom to cope with a signal that will convert to zero dBFS going into the digital audio workstation, plus a safety margin. There isn't any need for metering on the interface, although there's no actual harm if there is. The article is illustrated with a Mackie Onyx audio interface, which does indeed have an LED meter, which shows green when there's signal present and red when, quote from the manual, this dual colored LED will illuminate red when the channel's input signal is too high, indicating a signal overload, brackets OL. This should be avoided as distortion will occur. If the OL LED comes on regularly, check that the gain knobs are set correctly. I could argue with the correctness of that, but that would be for another video. But now comes the shocker. The top article in Goggle's search results on how to set preamp gain says, adjust the gain accordingly so that the meter remains predominantly green. Momentary peaks hitting red should be OK, but a prolonged red light indicates that you are overloading the preamp circuit. OK, I have to say that the article is probably inspired by Mackie's manual. Having a signal present LED is a great idea. Signal presence indicators have helped me a lot on many occasions in my audio career. But when the LED turns red, my guess is that Mackie has set this so that it turns red just under clipping. So it's a warning of imminent disaster, not that disaster has already happened. But the key is that it's the meter in the door channel that's the most important. Vital, in fact. If this is in the green, or yellow, if any of it shows yellow, then everything's fine. If it turns red at any point, even for a fraction of a second, you have clipping. And the solution to that is simply to back off the gain. It's often said on the internet and elsewhere that minus 18 dBFS is the level to aim for when recording. Yes, that's fine, but along with that, there is often fear, uncertainty, and doubt that even approaching zero dBFS will harm your audio. It won't. Anything up to minus 0.1 dBFS or even exactly zero dBFS in your original recording is fine. But setting the level lower will give you headroom, and you won't have to worry about an overenthusiastic vocalist pushing things into the red. Peaking at around minus 10 dBFS is a good place to be. OK, maybe I'm being over picky here, but this is the top search result in Google. Yes, I know it's Google, and it should be better. By the way, I'm on page two of the search results. Does anyone ever look at that? <laughs> <laughs> See you soon.